Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to share with you this psalm one more time. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face, and my heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not. O God of my salvation, for my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and give me and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. You know, there's something wonderful about this psalm that it shares with us, and it's what I said earlier, that this psalm, I think, invites us to pray with courage, because God is always here. Let me show you what I think. So there's a young boy. Well, not a boy, more of a young teenager. He's got, you know, a rosy cheeks, kind of a pretty face, not someone that you would really be intimidated by or afraid of. And he's down at a stream. It's a gentle flowing stream, flowing down to a much larger river. And there's grass growing lushly and green on all sides of this stream. There's a large, tall oak. Uh, stretching out big and mighty above it, its roots into the water, drinking, and wildflowers growing beautiful everywhere. It's kind of a, this serene place. And here, this young teenage boy has gone down into the stream to cool off his feet. And while he's down there, he's looking for, well, what any boy would look for rocks, rocks to throw. But not just any rocks, the kind that are smooth and flat that would skip five or six times easily across a still watery surface. And so as he's walking along this into this stream, he bends down and he picks up a rock and he finds a good one. He measures its weight in his hand. And if it's a good weight, he rubs his palms over it, making sure it's truly smooth on every side. Then he takes it between his fingers and his thumbs, and he, he checks the edges, making sure there's nothing that could cut him or hurt him, or that it doesn't have a lip that might catch on the surface of the water, causing the rock to flip over and sink into the bottom. He's finding the perfect rock. So when he finds one, he takes it and he puts it in his pouch. And he continues looking for more. Well, the serenity of this scene is disrupted then by the chaos of war on the other side of the stream. A foreign army has come down out of the mountains and encamped into the hills uh, overlooking the valley below. And he can hear the, the thunderous beats of their marching drums thundering throughout the valley. Their jeers, their taunts, their screams, their ridicules are, are sounding all throughout, echoing between the mountains. As the army of Israel is camped on the other side. And as this boy sees and hears these armies, these war cries going on, he gets up out of the stream and he walks down to the encampment where his brothers are, he has bread to feed them. And he takes the bread. And the closer he gets to the camp, he, the louder those jeers, those taunts, those ridicules, those threats, those cursings become. Until they crescendo into an upward roar of cheering and applause because their champion, the giant Goliath, has come and stood in the middle And as they sit, that boy sits with his brothers in the tank. Everyone's heart is filled with tear and is trembling. As that, that giant, his voice thunders throughout the valley, their hearts begin to shake all the more. Nobody wants to leave the tank. Nobody wants to step onto the battlefield. Nobody wants to be the one who is killed by this man. 
And yet in a moment of courageous prayer, the boy stands up. And in a moment of courageous prayer, knowing that God is with him, he walks onto that battlefield. There's this giant man, a beast of a man, standing before him, dripping in heavy armor. Armor on his head, on his chest, on his back, on his legs. A large, heavy spear in his hand. A large, heavy javelin strapped to his back. A large, heavy sword on his waist. And a large, heavy shield set before him. And yet this boy walks out with nothing but a tunic. A pouch of stones and a sling. And in a moment of courageous prayer, he puts that stone in a sling. And the very act of spinning that sling itself is a prayer asking God for speed and pre pre uh, precision on the rock. And the loud snap of the sling as he lets it go is the resounding amen to that prayer as God takes hold of that stone and drives it into the forehead of the giant Goliath, knocking him to the ground dead. See, David steps out in this moment of courageous prayer, letting his life be a prayer of courage because he knows that God is always here. He knows that God was there those moments when he was watching over flocks and a wolf or a lion or a bear would come and to steal those sheep away. And yet God was there when David was, David was able to kill that wild beast and save his flock from that death. And he knew that if God was with him then, God would be with him now even before this giant. And so he let his life be a prayer of courage knowing that God is always here. Now, now, I don't know when this psalm was written, if it was written shortly after the events of David and Goliath, or if it was written decades later when Absalom, his oldest son, was chasing him down to cut off his head and remove his crown, or somewhere in between. But David wrote this psalm as a confident prayer of courage, because he knows that God is always with him. He knows that God was with him when he was hiding in that cave from Saul. He knew that God was with him when, when he had to fight Saul and his armies. He knew that God was with him at every moment in his life, because God is always here. The trouble is, that we don't always believe that or live it out. We are called in this psalm to live our lives as lives of courageous prayer, calling on God and trusting in God to always be with us in every moment. And yet how often are our lives filled with, with terror, with fear, with insecurities, with doubts? And we find ourselves doing something we know we shouldn't. We face sin and temptation. We find ourselves giving ourselves over to those sins and temptations, even though God's Word says we shouldn't. And we know that God doesn't want us to be given over to those sins and temptations. But we're afraid of what the world says because the world says, hey, no, you should give yourselves over to those sins and temptations. You should give yourselves over to your lusts and your greeds and your desires instead of living a life of courageous prayer. Knowing that God is always with you to, to lead you away, to rescue you from those moments. And that's what David says in the Psalms, that God is there to rescue us. We didn't read it as part of our psalm today, but, but verse 3 of that psalm is beautiful. David says, even though my adversaries, my enemies, surround me and avail me and have come down on me, even though they're here to eat my flesh and to bring me to death, he says, it is they who fall. Not him. Because God is there at his side. And I love the way he ends it. He says, I know that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Not just in heaven when we will all be alive again, but in the land of the living. Right here and now, we will see the goodness of the Lord in our presence where we live. Because this is where God is. He is always here. And we will 
see his goodness and acted in our lives just as David saw them before the giant Goliath. And we see them today. He says, I know that I will see God's goodness in the land of the living. So he says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And that's tough for us to do. But we can do it because God has sent His Son into the world to save us from sin and death. To be with us, to be right here at every time and in every place. You know, we had a chance to live this out yesterday. That splashing in grace. We had a chance to live out a, a life of courageous prayer. It started uh, at about, well, about 1 o'clock. We were setting up uh, for it. And we pulled the small water slide out of its crate, its tote in the back. And O.C. can attest to this. It was covered in all sorts of disgusting bugs. And it would have been very easy for us to say, you know what, this is too much to deal with right now. We've only got an hour to set all this up. Let's just fold it back up and put it back in its crate and, and just forget we even have this, this slide. But instead, we got to live out a moment of courageous prayer by taking it out, knowing that we were going to be using this moment to connect people to Jesus, that Jesus could enter their hearts and bring them to faith. And so we took it out, and we hosed it down, we got some dish detergent, some sponges, and we scrubbed the thing down, and we cleaned it as best we could so that we could enjoy this moment of, of grace, that so we could live that life of courageous prayer, knowing that God is here. Well, then we got everything else set up, and I'm sure you guys heard the rolling thunder all afternoon long. And I, man, I was so disappointed, because all week long I was thinking, okay, this thunderstorm's coming four o'clock. Four o'clock, we'll be fine, that's when we end, we'll get two hours of this before the storm's done, and then at two o'clock, of course, the thunder starts rolling in. So about 2.15, we said, okay, we're starting to see lightning strikes as well, so we know it's in the vicinity. We need to go inside for a little bit. We need to decide, are we going to pack it all up, send everyone home, or are we going to try to wait out the storm? So in a moment of uh, courageous prayer, we, uh, we said, let's go get some ice cream, because it takes a lot of courage to get ice cream. Right? <laughs> uh, we said, let's get the ice cream and the popsicles. Let's come inside, and let's just see if this thing blows over. So we get all the kids their ice cream and popsicles, and they're loaded up with sugar, and they're ready to run lawlessly throughout the church, <laughs> and we can't go back outside yet. So, uh, you know, we said, hey, you know what, let's, let's keep waiting this out. And we played a great game of sardines. We had uh, some older children, and we had some very young children, and yet we all had a great game of sardines. So sardines is uh, hide and seek in reverse. Instead of everybody hiding with one person seeking, one person hides and everybody goes to seek. And it was a lot of fun. And for one hour we did that and we had a lot of fun cool on and off, not in the water but in the air conditioning as we just enjoyed each other's company. And then about the time that that was over, about 3.30, we noticed that the storms were moving on. We were able to go back outside and enjoy the walk. You know, but it took a moment of being and living that courageous life of prayer calling on God in this moment to help us have a great time, to move the storm beyond. Because we know that God is always here. And we got to rejoice in the moment and connect to a couple of families yesterday, which is pretty awesome. And we can do that because we know what God has done for us. Just like David had known that he had already been rescued from bears and lions and could stand before an armored giant. We know that no matter what we face in this world, we can stand before it because God has already rescued us from sin and death. God sent His Son into this world to die on a cross to take away our sins and His blood would wash over us freely and set us free that we would be and are forgiven. You are forgiven because of the blood of Jesus. You have been set free from your sins so that you can live a life of courageous prayer knowing that God is always here. And you have been baptized into that death of Jesus. And you have been baptized into His resurrection as He was raised from the dead to conquer death for you so that you no longer need to fear death in this world. That no matter what happens to you, whether you're in this world or in heaven with Jesus, you are living in the land of the living where God's goodness reigns. And it will reign in your life and it will reign over you. 
And that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And as God raised Jesus from the dead, he ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God. And he continues to pour out the Holy Spirit into our lives each and every day so that we know he is always here. He is always present. And because of Jesus pouring out that Spirit into our hearts, we know that we are empowered to live lives of courageous prayer, to trust in Him and to know that He is always here. So no matter what you face in your life, just remember, God is always here. And your life is a life of courageous prayer that can be lived out in this world. Instead of continuing a sermon and giving you examples of what that looks like, what I want to do now is I want to do what David did in the psalm. And I want to stop and pray. So let's close the sermon with a prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have brought us here this morning to hear your word, to choose this, and to have the good portion that you poured out for us. Lord, and just as much as David stood up in a life of courageous prayer, standing before a giant, even Mary, in our gospel reading, had lived a life of courageous prayer, doing something that women don't do in that day and time, sitting at the feet of a master to hear his word and to ask him questions. Help us to lead a similar life of courageous prayer, always seeking out you, knowing that you are always here. Lord, equip us in our lives of ministry. That no matter what we face, whether we are going out in the world to tell people about you and your love, or whether we are called to forgive someone who has hurt us, hurt us or uh, has mistreated us, or whether or not we are called just to simply sit down and study your word, help us to live that life in courageous prayer and to know that you are always here. Lord, we ask this in the name of your Son, whom you sent to deliver us from sin and death and who has poured out the Holy Spirit into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.